Good afternoon, crafters. We are live, and it is actually my first Facebook Live um, sort of tutorial demonstration, that sort of thing, in a little while. So hopefully you would have all found us. Uh, we always do our Facebook Live demos on our brand page on Facebook, Carnation Crafts. Um, I've clicked on the comments so I can see who's here. Carla's here. She says, hey, 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 beautiful. Hey, 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 yourself, Carla. Thank you for joining us. Ida's here as well from Florida. Thank you for joining us, um, Ida. So basically, these demonstrations are here just basically for a little chat. They're here so we can get to know you guys. We can have a little fun. We can share inspiration with you and also give you some card demonstrations that go from sort of the start of a card all the way through because obviously when we're on air both myself and Carla we don't always have time to go as in-depth to the demonstrations as what we would love to so this is a great opportunity um you'll have to forgive me I'm a little bit rusty so it's going to take me a little while to get back into the swing of things especially when I'm working lots of cameras and reading comments and I've forgotten how complicated it all was but we'll give it a go. We'll give it a go. Uh, lots of people here already. So thank you so much for joining me this afternoon. We've got Jenny and Karen and Anne's here. Pam from the DT. Hello, lovely. Uh, another Pam as well. Christine. So lots of people saying hello already. As we always say with these Facebook Lives, if you've got any questions as we go through, please feel free to write them up in the comments and I'll do my level best to try and answer them. Uh, this afternoon is all about something rather new and exciting. If you are sort of plugged into the Facebook group, Carnation Crafters, you might have seen a few little sneaky peeks that I was um, sharing uh, at the beginning of the week. Um, it is for a brand new... Um, heavily requested vignette, uh, which is for the Pitress Peacock. And here it is in all its glory. Traditional colorways for that peacock. Isn't it just glorious? Now this actual uh, vignette is a limited edition. It's available today as part of our deal of the day. So deal of the day is a brand new thing. We've been bringing you through about a week or so now uh, where we have new exciting fun offers, special deals and things like that, but they're only available for 24 hours, um, the special prices. Once obviously the 24 hours is up, they go back to the normal prices. So just hop onto the website, download your vignette, get, get, get that peacock in your basket because it's just gorgeous. And as I say, the original, which is just as beautiful in the white, is also available to download for free. That one is free, but we did get a lot of requests for the traditional, what we would term traditional peacock colorway like so. So that is now available as our deal of the day today, which is fantastic. I'm going to have a little scroll back and just check through the the comments there. Um, oh yeah, lots and lots of love. Lots of people already downloaded the peacock, um, the traditional colourway as well, which is fantastic. Uh, Natalie says, I'm working honest. <laughs> I love that little sneaky, sneaky watches whilst we're, we're at work and stuff. Uh, lots of welcome backs, which is wonderful. Thank you, Leslie. Thank you very much uh, to Shirley as well. Karen. Um, oh, Barbara's sending encouragement as well. Thank you, Barbara. That's really sweet. Uh, Jane loves the new pink colours for the peacock. Yeah, I just think, do you know what? I think there's something Carnation should do incredibly well is the longevity of the die sets because... You may have used the white one, you may have used it a few times. I think mean, great for Christmas, let's face it, that on a Christmas card is just going to look so elegant, isn't it? Absolutely gorgeous as we're coming into our Christmas fakes. But being able to download and then get a new colourway for something is just a great way of re-energising your mojo, if you like, your crafty mojo for these sets. Uh, Susan says, thank you for the help with the Z card. You're more than welcome, Susan. That's really sweet. Now, I saw your post in group and it was um, a demo we done on air on Monday uh, with Fairy Tale Day collection so I was able to direct you to the right place for that um Carla says it's so pretty and it is isn't it you just want to stroke it it looks like it's real just gorgeous beautiful feathers on this um Karen says good morning this is my first live with Carnation Crafts I'm so excited to be able to attend oh well welcome along Karen thank you for joining us um as I say lots of love coming in for that that peacock new colorway Carol says smashing vignette isn't it just isn't it just, oh, Kath says, the post has just arrived for my carnation order from the weekend. Yes, the uh, the weekend deal of the day is was fabulous. We did a, a little sort of flash sale for the deal of the day on both Saturday and Sunday. And I know lots of you have been sharing your little goodies that you've been ordering, which is lovely to see. 
Uh, Jan says, I missed the peacock die. My internet is playing up and I had to go to work. Looked at the website this afternoon. It's already sold out. I'm so disappointed. Oh, Jan, I'm so sorry to hear that. Uh, we do have, obviously, um, more dies coming in. The great thing about Carnation is we haven't discontinued anything from when we started two years ago. So, um, you know, while obviously with the pandemic and things like that, things are a little bit slower coming in. We always will get new stock of things too. Um, ba ba ba. Yeah, a couple of people saying they've missed out on the peacock. Don't worry, we will obviously um, be getting more in. And if you are interested in getting it, you can sign up on the product pages for an alert when the item comes back into stock. Um, but if you are intending on getting it, get the vignette now and save it for when you get the dye as well. Um, and Anna's here from Norway as well. Thanks, Anna. Thank you for joining us. Okay, so... And we're going to be creating a easel card. Now, this is something we get asked a lot for. Um, how do we put them together? So it's nice, again, as we've said, to be able to go through that in detail. And we'll be going to use the Petite Heart, which is one of the frame um, die sets that launched alongside Nature's Grace. Back in, I think Nature's Grace was possibly in May or June. So it's been, it's been out a little while. So it's always nice to revisit these things. Um, what I'm going to do though to start is we're going to go through how to cut a vignette on a, on a mirrored and of course answer any questions as we go. So let me just flip that camera around. There we go. That seems to be working okay. Just get it in the centre, Hannah, would always help. So here we have in front of us the picturesque peacock in the traditional colourway, which as we've mentioned is the deal of the day for today's um, deal. And in your download, there are several files. You've got new files, uh, colours for the flowers, so they all match. You've also got your standard vignettes and also your mirrored vignettes. And what we have in front of us is a mirrored vignette. Whenever you are printing your vignettes, use um, Adobe Reader. It's a free to download PDF reading software. And we recommend if your printer settings have it, print on um, matte photo paper and highest quality settings for your, um, what do you call it? Pro paper. <laughs> uh, sorry, the I've just got distracted because the, the internet's going a little bit funny and it's a little bit jerky on the screen. So hopefully it's still still running okay for you guys, but we will we will carry on. It might just sort of jump a little bit. So apologies for that. So we've printed this, this is the mirrored version on our pro printing paper. Whenever we are printing mirrored, we print on 120 GSM weight, okay? That's because we fold this in half. The idea of a mirrored vignette is to give you this beautiful color weight on the front as well as on the reverse of the die cut, okay? It eliminates any white edges. It means if you're doing over the edge cards, you've not got any sort of unsightly white bits or anything like that, but it also give the, gives you the option to use the die cut in both ways. So here we're going to do how to cut into and fold the vignette. So we're cutting onto that black line. Now the black line itself is in the centre of the design, not necessarily in the centre of the page. So it's really key we fold exactly onto the black line. And the easiest way we've found to do this is to use a nice fine pair of scissors, snip both top and bottom, and then fold. So that snip gives you the exact place to start folding. It, it sort of encourages the paper to fold exactly on that black line. And then we just go along, squeeze and pinch to fold exactly on that black line. That is what's key. That is what's gonna make your vignette double-sided, okay? Now at this stage, I'm gonna grab my die set. And of course, this picturesque peacock is a bit of a tongue twister. Um, as you can see, well loved, because I've had it out of the packet many times. And I'm just gonna gently ease it away from the sticky on the car. And of course, all of our die sets come within their own storage solution. So you keep that sort of plastic wallet, keeps everything nice and safe. You can even keep your die cuts in there as well. Now, dies are basically a cutting device okay so all of the detailing you see all of this beautiful um, line detail within in the feathers there this is what the raised areas are what push down into the paper to cut it out now you might think okay if it's a blade it's gonna be sharp you can see I can run my fingers across it no problem it's actually when it goes through the machine it's the pressure of the machine that makes these cut all we need to do is lay our die over the top of our vignette to cut obviously it's not going to cut that way so if you do find that just flip your paper over for your mirrored image and then just adjust into place. You'll see all around the edge, you've got what we call a bleed line. 
This actually um, not only helps you align the vignette nice and sort of centrally, but also um, it makes sure you get edge to edge colour as well. So you can get that nice and central. And then I'm sticking the die cut, the die to the vignette, sorry, using uh, repositionable tape. The tape I use is Scotch tape. And all the way around, just in four points to make it nice and anchored. You'll notice I've left my pages um, unglued, okay? Because if I want a mirror image of a double facing each other, leave the two sides of the paper unglued. If you want the back sort of stuck to the front, if you like, what I would recommend is a spray adhesive. Um, again, there's, there's different versions out there. Um, just give that light spray, obviously, before you stick your die to it, and that will keep the pages together. Into our cutting plates on a normal sandwich it goes just refer to your manual and then we're going to use a little bit of cut tidy cut tidy works as an extra shim it basically pushes that paper sort of down into that die gives you a really lo lovely beveled edge um, but it also catches all the little off cuts of the die all those little excess pieces and into the machine it goes um let's have a look Karen says, I wasn't aware of Facebook Live on Monday. I can still access it. Thank you. Um, I'm not sure what what the what the question is there, there Karen. Apologies. Um, I don't remember doing a Facebook Live on Monday, but that's possibly, that might just be me and baby brain. Um, we, did a sh we did a show on Create and Craft on, on last Monday, which was Fairy Tale Day, where we demonstrated how to do a, um, a Z card fold, if that's what you're referring to. Um, Marcia says, uh, Hi, Hannah, I love the Peacock vignette. I downloaded it this morning, but there was not a mirrored image. Have I done something wrong? No, Marcia, you haven't. Don't you worry. Uh, there was a little bit of a gremlin in the system when we um, uploaded the vignettes. It is being sorted. Um, some people are, uh, like have a broken link when they try and open it as well. Uh, the team are aware, they are working on it, and they are um, resending all the links to you to your email addresses. So um, just bear with them. It should be done within the next, I don't know, hour, two hours maybe. But yeah, they are all being resent for you. So there we have our peacock cut out. You saw I just taken it away from the paper, just lifted it gently. And I'm using a poke tool just to poke one of the holes. And we can just gently prise our peacock out of the die like so, okay? So there we have our beautiful, beautiful D Little Day vignette, limited edition peacock in its traditional colours. Obviously cut with all that beautiful detailing. Because I haven't stuck the two sides together, I can, if I'm clever, gently peel the two sides apart which gives me the mirror image. This could be, you know, sort of a pair of peacocks on a card front or something like that. You know, it gives you much more scope for ideas. It gives you more scope for um, compositions with your dies as well. I mean, doesn't that look stunning? Obviously, the front of the die is going to be more beveled than what the back of the die cut is going to be. That's just how dies work. That's just how it is. Um, to stop any sort of transfer of lines or cut lines and things like that, do use your cut tidy. Use a little bit of copier paper on the flat surface of um, the back of the die cut as well, just to give that a little bit more bolstering. And of course, at this stage, we can go over this with a ball tool to give that extra texture as well. So there we go. That gives you your two peacocks. And of course, as we said, if you do glue them together, the back is then as beautifully coloured as the front. So that's just a quick tutorial on how we work with the mirrored vignettes. But we are going to then use that peacock as a pride of place on the front of this card. So let me just bring him into shot. You can see with him, what I've done is cut him a couple of times and added decoupage layers as well, just give him even more rounding and even more prominence. But let's just grab a few of our die cuts and have a little shifty about with flowers, some of the light work, some of the little extras from Nature's Grace as well. I'm going to build a whole card in this demonstration. 
Uh, Marcia said, sorry, spoke too soon. I have it now. Brilliant. That means, yeah, that means your emails come through. That's really great. I'm glad the team are, are sending those out for, for everyone. Uh, Karen says, my apologies. I misunderstood. I thought you said it was Facebook Live. Do you know what? I may have done, but that's just baby brain. <laughs> Yeah, it was a, a creating craft women's show that we did where we demonstrated how to do the Z bolt. Uh, if you want to view that back, by all means, um, just hop onto Creating Crafts website, uh, click on Catch Up. They have their Catch Up service back now, um, and you can watch watch the shows back. So we're going to create an easel card. Um, what we have done to create our base for our easel is taken. Our heart frame, this is a petite heart, which launched alongside the Nature's Grace collection. And we've cut the largest die, the outermost frame die, three times. That's going to cut the base, the mechanism and the top of the card, okay? Because we're working in a sort of construction idea, creating this card base, we're using our 350 GSM Perfect Smooth because it's a nice heavy weight of peacock. Uh, Pam's just said she's got hers too. Thank you, Pam. Pam was actually emailing me earlier about the uh, the little uh, peacocks and everything there. So glad that's sorted for you. Now, this demonstration, I'm using the, the heart frame, as I've mentioned, but this easel design can be done with any one of our frames. So please do feel free to adapt this as you wish. But it's just taking you through the step by steps on how we build this. So on to the inside of our card. We're going to add these spectacular mats and layers. Now, again, these are all part of that petite heart frame. And the perfect papers I'm using, the coloured paper you see here, is from the Nature's Grace collection because then it matches in with, with the vignettes. I'm using finger lift tape to stick those mats and layers and that filigree all down to the base. OK, all flat. We've not got any rise on any of these. Just as an added extra, the, fin the filigree that I'm using for the inside and the outside when you see it in a minute is cut from our Perfect Blush. Perfect Blush is one of our collection of white cardstocks that have um, a hint of colour. And these are great because rather than being sort of just a plain white card, the Perfect Blush series work by having tonal colours that will work in different spectrums of, of, of designs if you like so this one is the perfect blush in the rose which has a really nice warm color and a little hint of pink which means if i'm using warm colors like the purples and the lilacs you see and these sort of aubergines in the mats and layers from the perfect papers it's going to work in tandem with that it's going to bring in that lovely lovely warm look to create the first layer of our easel we've scored about half an inch from uh, the top of the heart and we've added a little bit of red liner tape and then just stuck that to the base okay stuck that over the mats and layers and stuck that to the base at this stage obviously this would be how you create a temp fold or a side fold card it's exactly the same for us what we're doing is our easel so we've now scored across the middle of the heart and again we're using our red liner tape but you see the red liner tape is only on the lower half below the score line of that heart. Reason being is when we come to open, it's gonna pop that front up, okay? When we stick the front on, we're gonna hold it in place. We're just gonna line it up. Again, this is all from 350 Perfect Smooth, nice heavy construction weight of card. We're gonna peel back one of the layers and use our poke tool just to remove the carrier sheet on the tape. I'm only doing one. We're gonna then stick that securely which means we're hands free to move this around and then remove the rest of the tape. Rather than trying to do it all and get in a mess and sort of stick our hands to the card and all this sort of business, we can go in like so, okay? The reason we use red liner tape is because it's a nice strong adhesive. So remember, we're using a nice construction weight card. We want a nice strong adhesive tape to stick everything together. Now you'll see when we open, you get that wonderful pop-up effect from that easel. And these just really transform on a mantelpiece. They look really, really lovely, pride of place um, with all our detailing on. So let's have a quick tidy up, move all the carrier sheets away. So onto the top, we're gonna to start building our story. We're gonna start building our card front and we're gonna repeat the colors that we have on the inside. So again, we have got those mats and layers from the Perfect Papers for Nature's Grace in those aubergine tones. And once again, I'm going to use finger lift tape. The beauty of finger lift tape is we can just simply tear it from the roll like so and just have it in areas around. 
when we come to stick fingerless great because it's got these little areas sort of you can get your finger underneath and easily take away the excess okay so you're not sort of fiddling around with tape that comes right up to the edge or anything like that you'll see whenever i add a layer i'm folding back the carrier sheet on the tape and creating a little tab over the edge of the card that means again i can align the mats and layers perfectly to the base hold it in place and peel okay rather than going in with lots of glue or lots of sticky and then trying to find you know the area and then you're making a mess because you've got glue everywhere or sticky tape or you can't adjust it that by by sort of folding the the carrier sheet of the tape over the edge it allows you play time it allows you that little bit of extra time just to sit and position things properly because it will slide about on those carrier sheet layers okay uh humberta says hello from rodeo island sorry i'm late humberta you are always more than welcome you are such a wonderful support for both carla and i um, and of course, don't worry if anyone is late or anyone joining us now, you can always watch back from the start. We will upload all of our Facebook lives after uh, we go out. So you can always watch them back at your leisure as well. Again, for the filigree layer, we're just aligning that and sticking again with finger lift tape. You'll see me often with demonstrations and Carla's the same as well. We often use um, foam tape and things like that to give height and dimension to our layers. Sometimes when you want all the emphasis on obviously something, you know, like the peacock, for example, it's nice just to use those flat layers, those finger lift tape layers, just so all the height and all the prominence is in the die cuts themselves. OK, so I'm just removing all the carrier sheets from the finger lift tape. You'll notice again, I've only stuck the finger lift tape to the centre of the heart i mean you can if you want to um you know go in and put little glue dots all the way around the edge but really i quite like the idea that these are left free um so it gives you a little bit of movement within the design as well so from here we've obviously got our base we've got our little story we've got our background in which we can start adding in our designs so i'm going to take a look at positioning and we're just going to have a little play about with some of the florals Again, these are uh, Quince Bloom and Gardenia from Nature's Grace collection. And I kind of want them just, you know, all over the card. I'm just lining them up and just seeing how the colours work. I think that rich sort of plum colour, crimson colour against the royal blue of the peacock is just divine. It's just stunning. One of my favourite colour combinations. The bold colours of these just absolutely sing. But I really do want to add in a few of these florals as well. But of course you know me being greedy i want them all on the card but they're not all going to fit sort of like so so we can layer we can snip into these and we can layer them up don't ever think with your die cuts that you're just um sort of subject to using them as they are cut there's cut line details there for a reason not only to give the detailing for the die cut but to allow you to go in snip into them mix them up adjust them take parts out of them like I'm doing here with just this quince flower. I'm just taking one of the, the branches, if you like, snipping that away. And all I'm doing is following the cut line details to release a few of those florals. So rather than a corner, we can start using these as sprigs of design. Let's just take that side sprig off as well. And it gives you the ability to become basically your own florist. You can then start adding in more detailing so now with the gardenia we can pop the other florals behind it and you see how you're making that corner more of a bunch of flowers for example okay same with these little ones oh excuse me whilst i drop my scissors i'm going to release these because i may or may not use them if i don't use them in this demonstration they can go into my stash for another time but i'm just neating this off anywhere where i've snipped I'm going in with those scissors and just rounding the edges to give it a much more natural look so you haven't got any hard lines on the petals there or anything. Humberta says, little rescue kitty is driving me crazy. Who knew something so tiny could be so much work? <laughs> oh, Humberta, you do make me giggle. Yeah, kitties are, are or can be incredibly naughty, can't they? But they are such fun, such little bundles of fluff, which are just gorgeous. So here, I might use some of these little cut-off blossoms um, sort of sporadically through the design. Perhaps I might add them on top of the gardenia, perhaps 
just pull the, the petals back and start loading them like so just because it gives you a more natural look and it's also bringing the florals into one another. Do you see how that's changed that whole look of that design? You've now got sort of the red flowers intermixed with the white just by poking them under the petals themselves. So those are my florals. I'll come back to those in just a minute once I'm happy. Also, what I wanted to include was some of the little heart shaped and keys as well, because I think these work so beautifully in the sweep of the tail with that peacock. So whenever I'm designing, you see, I keep coming back to things, I keep layering things, I keep um, just taking a look before I commit to gluing anything. And that's a great thing to do because it just gives you the ability to decide how and where you want things positioned in your final look. And of course you can take a picture of these as well on your mobile or whatever to refer back to. But I know I would like that heart gem to the center. So I'm gonna stick that down. Let's commit to something. Let's go forward with our design. Um, I'm just using my pin flare glue. So you saw me there just taking the little bit of excess glue out the, the top there. And then pin flare is a three dimensional glue gel, which gives us height and a course dimension in our finished projects. So it gives you this like a 3D, but it gives you much more wiggle room. Um, I always prefer to use um, pin flare 3D glue gel above sort of foam pads and things like that, because it gives you the ability to change things up. Um, I'm quite happy with the placement of that. I love how the tail of the peacock just swoops around that little heart as well. It's just glorious. Also, um, what I'm going to include within this card make is one of the light work dies. So this is like a silhouette. If I move the rest of the background out, you can see I've cut this from the same colour purple as what you can see in the easel card there. But it's just all this lovely light work. It's this open work filigree effect. But it's so pretty. I mean, I can imagine this um, cut from sort of black cardstock and then popped on acetate with alcohol markers behind to give a stained glass effect. Paper piecing, if you're into that, these dies are perfect for that as well. But the flowers match the florals on the corners. So these are the same quince blossom that are in the actual finished sort of coloured vignette, if you like, as well, which I just think really ties in, and just adds to the whole theme. But again, I'm not going to use it just as one whole panel. I'm going to cut in and cut out little sprigs of these as well, because I just think having them as tuck-ins is just such a glorious idea. So I'm going to snip away a few of the little petals like so. And again, that edge, just rounding that up with the scissors there as well. Just gently going in and following the cut line detail to give it a more natural edge like so, okay? They are then gonna tuck in with the rest of the florals to add even more texture, okay, and a little bit more drama. So once again, I am gonna to commit to sticking these gardenias down. I'm gonna keep checking, because I don't want them sort of, I want them behind the peacock, but I don't want them too, so far behind that it doesn't, doesn't work and you can't see them. So I think there's quite a nice position because it hugs the top of the peacock and then follows the flow around the tail as well which means I just need a little bit of glue gel on this edge. Again, using glue gel because it allows me a little bit of wiggle room on these things, keeping that glue to the edges so I'm not sort of overlaying the glue onto the edge of the card. So just popping that in there like so. Now you might think there's something like this, well, how on earth am I gonna get this in an envelope, for example? These kind of cards um, are designed to go in boxes, gift boxes, really, um, to give them even more impact and, and a wow feature. Little tuck-ins. These are gonna go just behind, just to elongate that design like so. And then where was my other little tuck-in? Just here. And actually, I think I'm going to have that poking up that way. So you've got that kind of sweep um, from a curve from here around and up, which will then mirror the same direction, but in the opposite. So you've got a nice sort of balance going on with the peacock's tail there. Whenever you're looking for compositions, do look to the vignettes you're using, the die cuts you're using to try and... <sighs> what would be the best way to describe it? Um, perhaps to try and mirror and balance the looks and the designs, um, the way they're done, the way they are produced is with that idea in mind that you want to obviously use them in your finished card designs. They are from a team of really passionate 
individuals who who know craft okay so a lot of that design work is done for you allowing you just have a little play have a little adventure um where do i want you let's put you can't you that side again poking things behind layering things up adjusting them as you go offering them up these really are yours to have a play with never ever I say in all my demonstrations never be afraid of layering never be afraid of loading up your cards with florals because in nature those flowers would be overlapping they would be um, sort of intermingled so once I'm happy with positioning for those again same thing a little bit of pin flare and just poking those behind those white petals that one because that's a little bad I'm going to give that a little bit of shaping a lot of these I've already shaped before coming to air but all we're doing is just pulling those petals up, giving them more height and dimension, and then going in with our glue gel just to bolster any shape we've given those. You can, of course, do it with ball tools um, as well. I love that. I think that's such a pretty colour combination. I think that works so beautifully. Same thing again with our light work, as you've seen, sort of lifting the petals and just teasing these into place. This time around, I'm going to grab a little bit of um, pin flip book binding glue it's just a white glue but a nice strong glue as well um i am going to put it on the back of my hand because i have done a skin test on this but obviously um if you're new to this glue do a patch test before you put anything on your skin and i'm just going to dab a little bit on the back and then we're going to go in lift and place again letting those petals and things overlap and overrun one another this little edge i'd like coming training down so again i'm loading one side i'm loading the other and then i'm going to put a little bit on the corner there just to give you that that idea of how things work together a few little snips just to snip out some more flowers from this remember when it comes to to vignettes the choice is endless once you've cut them we have a totally open angel policy you're allowed to make and sell as much as you like and of course, it's such a, a lovely thing to go in and discover ways, new ways of using them. I and mean, we mentioned getting the new, the colourways for the um, peacock there, the picturesque peacock. It just re-energises you. I'm sure you guys at home are going to have so many ideas of how you might be using this in your own card makes as well. This is just one example. And I'm so looking forward to seeing everything you guys create with it as well. Lift and tuck in. Again love that I think that's so so pretty and then we're going to use sort of the the main part of those florals just on the top there as well so good rule of thumb when it comes to um positioning things and adding things to your card is always work in odd numbers the reason being is the eye likes odd numbers because odd numbers provide the eye with a center it's the same as when we place things in triangles you're drawing the eye to the center of the card or the center of the area you've sort of marked with the with the triangles there again a little bit more white glue just on the back and we're just going to lift and just tuck those more rough edges under okay so we've really really loaded up that side of the easel but i think it's a little bit of fun i just think it's really really pretty at this stage i'm just going to test that it's still opening beautifully that flurry of florals just really brings that corner to life. Really, I mean, it just looks gorgeous as is. Now, originally, this would have had your white peacock on. Again, just the stunning. So you could absolutely do your version of this card with your white peacock. I've already um, sculpted this peacock. So what I will just quickly do is show you how we then work that peacock. Okay, because at the moment it's just a flat die cut. What we would do before we added the card, and this is what I was mentioning with the florals there, is we're going to take um, just a foam mat, a dense foam mat and a ball tool. Um, and we're going to go through starting off with the largest size ball tool. And this is giving shape. This is giving dimension. This is bringing your die cuts to life. So just all over the vignette, following all of that wonderful detailing that um, our creative director, Nick, has given just beautifully into this peacock and its tail and its feathers and just the drama of it all is just stunning okay then we can start going in and picking out areas so areas like his wing for example is going to be more 
ray. So again, going out and just shaping that wing more, shaping that little face, that little head more. And then a fun thing to do, especially with the peacock, is all of its eyes, the eyes on the feathers, just going in and pushing those out into the foam with your ball toy. It kind of makes those eyes um, pop. It gives them a little bit more drama all the way along. So you're taking something which is uh, essentially a flat shape, adding in texture, adding in detailing, and it's giving you this wonderful, wonderful look of something um, a lot more detailed. Okay, it's, it's really bringing that artwork to life. So if we wanted to use our white peacock, we could have him sitting amongst the flowers like so. I just think that's stunning, a really, really beautiful colorway. But if you want something that's a little bit more bold on the color, with added drama, here we have our coloured peacock. I just love that that spray of the peacock's feathers is just gorgeous. So it really is up to you. You do it in the same way, from the cutting to the balling and things like that. For this, if I just bring it up to the camera, you can see I have cut that peacock several times and then layered him. Okay, so I'm using my mirrored vignettes. The colour is on the back as well as on the front, which means I can go to town on balling those layers up adding lots of height and dimension, using my pin flare glue gel to then lift those layers. And I've just snipped into them. So I've chosen areas like his body and his head and then his wing decoupage. But because I'm using the mirrored vignettes, you're not seeing any white areas. And you see along the tail, I've done the same thing as what I did with the white peacock there. I've just added in that height and dimension to each of the eyes using the ball tool. So I am going to use our traditional colour peacock. So again, just finding out where he's going to sit like so and then just adding in the again pin flare glue gel as appropriate. I'm not going to glue all his tail, I'm going to stick his body down first and then just check where his tail is sitting. Quite happy for him to sit over the flowers because let's face it, it is all about him. He is just glorious. And then I can see just in the areas where I need to add a little bit of glue gel just to stick. So again, little tip, don't go too mad if you're putting in toppers like this. You want to be able to just guide where you're sticking our peacock in first. He's gonna have to be lifted up a little bit so he's not interfering with the bottom of the card there, but I think that's really pretty. Okay, so he's looking glorious. Again, at each stage, I'm just checking that the card is opening. Everything on the front is then straight and aligned and kind of works with the background as well. Because we are working on an easel card, we need what we call a stopper. So I've taken the centre um, die cuts from, from the petite heart frame. Sorry, I had to remember the name of it then. And again, I've just, just mirrored what I've done in the background there, just exactly the same, repeated that. So the colours of the perfect papers, even the filigree layer matches in with the perfect blush on the rose of the filigree in the background. But this time around, we've lifted this layer with foam tape. This is just literally um, industrial foam tape. Um, I get it from... Uh, a place named after a rainforest. It's probably the easiest way to describe it. <laughs> and rather than sort of stick it dead centre, I'd like a little bit of a lean to the card. So again, test out where you want your, your front of your card to sit. And then just position your stopper accordingly. The stopper's obviously raised on that foam so it catches the edge of the card. I'm gonna add one last thing in just to tie back into sort of the metal work of the heart there and also add just a little bit more interest. This is the, the key set again from the Nature's Grace collection and this is just going to hang sort of from the peacock down onto the heart. So again, it's tying those layers together. Remember, layering up, overlaying things, ties different layers together. A little bit of pin flare. I will use tweezers for this just before I get pin flare all over my fingers and all over the card. And that's going to go just under the peacock and his breast there and then just trail down across those florals and down into the heart so you're connecting those layers you're connecting that peacock to that heart and it all kind of works together to tell a nice story when we open because we've positioned that heart like so we then have a really beautiful easel card if i don't knock it over hannah come on hannah like so that will stay open um 
And then we have just a demonstration featuring our peacock in its new colourway. Let me turn the camera around and I will lift that up so you can see. There we go. Oh, I keep knocking it over, honestly. I'm all fingers and thumbs when I'm trying to do it back to front with the camera. There we go. That keeps open like so. I mean, you could absolutely um, add a sentiment to this, perhaps add in a little stamp sentiment. Perhaps you want a sentiment on the inside of the card. But I think something like this, where you're just chucking those flowers in, you're using those lovely um, light works from the, the open work design, so the textured areas here for your tuck-ins, just work so spectacularly with that beautiful, beautiful traditional colorway peacock as well. I can't wait to see what you guys are going to do, your versions of this, or perhaps you're going to use the, the picturesque peacock in its traditional colourway in a totally different way. I cannot wait to see it. Do upload your makes to our Facebook group, Carnation Crafters, because uh, we love seeing them. They're just fantastic. Um, let me know. Tag me in the posts as well so I can see, because it's really, really fun to see what you guys have been making. Um, Carla will be back. Um, what's the day today? Is it Thursday today? Carla will be on tomorrow uh, with the True Gift of Christmas, um, which is our brand new Christmas USB. Um, that will be as an early bird at six o'clock UK time. Um, then she'll be on several shows on Saturday with the, the Christmas USB as well. And I'm back on Monday night on Create and Craft with uh, Christmas Revisited. So we'll be looking at our 2020 2020 collection so i've got some fun demos planned for you then as well have a look at our events page on our brand page too because we've already uh, advertised our next facebook live which i think is next wednesday i'll have to double check that <laughs> i can never remember these things but i do know i will be demonstrating above the clouds and fairy tale day so keep an eye out for those because uh, they may be launching soon as well <laughs> take care everyone thank you for joining me for this afternoon i can't wait to see what you make and we will see you again next week bye